everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to our 4 for 4 series, The Heritage Round. And I just want to say this is all about the play. Absolutely. Because I'm going to move my papers here for a minute because we are going to work on layout number one today. We are going to get started. But I want to show you something. Uh, above my uh, workspace here, this is what I have. I have stitching and thread, needles and thread. I have my Tim Holtz a stapler. I have a distressor, you know, sander. My distressor, I got black ink. Look at all these Prima chalk inks. I have Ranger ink. And then I have all these punches to my left. Because when I say I'm going to play in this round, this is what I'm going to play with. And since these are special photos, it's time to take a little special um, treatment to these layouts. And then also, with that, taking that little bit of special time playing a little bit more than you normally would. So that is my plan. Not to say that I will get all of this in on these layouts, but I have it in reserve. The inspiration is right there. And I find for myself that if I have items, i move this stuff up so you don't see it. If I have items close to my desk, they don't have to be on my desk because I, I do like space when I'm scrapbooking. But I find that if I have items near my desk, I'm more apt to use them and I feel like I'm more creative. And so that's truly something to consider in this round. If you want to play with those dies, those punches, the distressing, the inking, the stamping, the stitching, go ahead and pull it out. You don't have to pull everything out. I just I like to show options, so I do pull a variety, but you could just focus on one thing. You could just focus on distressing. You could just focus on sanding. You could just focus on stitching or pulling out a special die. This is the time because we do have special photos. Oh, love it. I am so excited. So what I wanted to say is, um, I lost something recently. And so I just want to say something. I did find it. it took me hours. A couple little tears were shed, but I did find it. It was important paper. Um, but I do want to say, don't lose this. And if you have to take some washi tape and put it in front of you, don't lose this because we do have a holiday in between all of this and we do have Thanksgiving prep and all that. You will forget what your papers one through four was because I've already forgotten. Isn't that something? And I even have spent time with this. So do not lose this. And so what I do is I just tape it to one of my lights, <laughs> one of my light stands. That's what I do. So of course we are going to be playing with layout number one today. Let's get cracking. Let's have fun. And let's talk about some options when it comes to special photos. And I want to show you one photo that I have right now. Oh my goodness, where's that? Did I lose it? Oh, uh, we're going to talk about something this big. Look at that photo. <gasps> Does that make you excited? Yes, I am excited. Okay, and we're also going to talk about if you don't know the people in your photo, what we're going to do. We're going to talk about that in this layout. So for layout number one, we are going to be playing with all four patterns, so all four papers. And so, of course, I'm going to be using ivory cardstock in my uh, series this time because my papers are so colorful and so rich in color that I definitely want to have a little bit of a neutral thing going on, like a little bit of a blank canvas. So for paper number one, it is indeed that big diagonal triangle. That is what we're going to play with. And of course, it's not hard to figure out where that may land. It doesn't have to be. And also number two, which was my turquoise floral, number two is a one by 12, not hard. Number three, a one by 12, not hard. And paper number four, this will be our three by six. So that is what we're going to play with. So in the most simplest form, when you have papers that are pre-cut, you simply are just uh, moving the inks around and then taking consideration what photo you're going to use. So before you start moving your papers, look at your photo. And my photo is going to be of, these are my great grandparents. Never got to meet them. I don't really know a lot about them. So this is part of the series I'm excited about too. Not only about scrapbooking, but then also to learning some more about my family history. Isn't that the beauty? Absolutely. And then you wonder. So have your photo ready because this will help you determine how you want to do your papers. And of course, you know, I'm going to dress things up. So I will come back with my finished layout and show you my, what I decided to do. So for these four pieces of paper, what could you do? And so this would be a time since we have such a big piece of paper and such a big design. That's why I had that photo laying here. And um, what did I do with it already? If you have a big photo, this would be a great layout to use because your design is so big, your piece of paper is so big, and isn't that just an instant 
you can still see this design from the top left to the bottom right. So if you have a big photo, you really don't need much more than that. This would be a great design for a big photo. I, I am definitely going to be scrapbooking this. My mom is right here. I just love looking at my parents when they were kids. Isn't that amazing? Amazing, amazing. And so I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. This is a great design for a huge photo. So for these four pieces of paper, you can simply come down here and you can leave this diagonal piece the size it's in and flush it completely to the left because it is that exact same 12 inches. This is easy. And then we have two 1 by 12 strips and so we could layer those. And then you could also break out your border punches and then all of that distressing and sanding. That's what you could do that. Dress up, do some treatments to these strips. Don't you don't have to let them just that way. And then also too, a lot of people do inking. And I may do that in this round. Something I don't normally do. That's what this round is about. And then of course with the photo, you could take this three by six and you could use that as a layering piece for your photo, or you could come up here and do something with it up here. So what could you do with this three by six up here? Now that is the photo I am definitely going to use is that you can definitely, I'm hoping I'm in frame. This items up here at the top is throwing me off. Is that you could, like I said, you could use this as a layering piece. Very easy. You could bring this three by six up here and then that is where you could put your title and journaling all in one block. Or you could bring this down here and layer it down here. And then you could put your journaling. It depends on how much journaling you have. You could put, again, your title and journaling up here. You can play with this. I am definitely going to be cutting this apart and make some embellishments out of this 3x6. That's my plan. So definitely hang on for that. And then I want to show something with this photo. As we go through using these Heritage Special Photos, what you can do is consider your mats behind this. And so in when I was building the kit, I had said that for matting, I put three neutrals in here. I did Ivory, Craft, and Black. So I want to show you a visual that just sometimes simply changing the color of your photo mat can give you a different mood and feel. So there's the Ivory. And it gives you that mat, but then it's not in your face because it matches the background. So then let's insert the craft. This gives you another mood and feel. Color is so powerful. I love that. And of course, there's that vintage heirloom feel with that craft. You can never go wrong with that. And brown is just a beautiful color. And then let's add the impact of black. The most beautiful color. <laughs> Yes, love black. And so again, that was just three simple, basic neutrals. But each one of those evoke a different mood and feel, especially when you're talking with heirloom and uh, vintage photos. So again, there's no wrong way to do that. And so when I was building the kit, I put all three of those in for matting because I didn't know. It depends on how I end up doing the page and my embellishments. And so one more thing I want to talk about is that I recently have been talking about this uh, website that you can go and you can get free ephemera and it is so vast. There is so much to get. And I wanted to show that this was one of the type of ephemera pieces that I got and it's from uh, the old design shop. And I had that listed here. <laughs> oh my goodness, my notes. I want to make sure I say it correctly. The old design shop. It will be listed below and it is free and you can use that for personal use. And so definitely I will have that listed below. And so I am definitely going to be getting in some of these vintage pieces this ephemera and that was free. You would think this was a piece of paper. I just printed it. It's just a printable. Isn't this lovely? There's so much ephemera and I wanted to show this and I think I showed that in building the kit, but you're going to see these. And this was just a sampling. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. So if you don't have a lot of vintage type ephemera, you can go to this website and just print a couple sheets. I mean, look at this right here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. Uh, tucking pieces, layering pieces, title pieces, journaling pieces. So I'm actually going to use one as basically a mat. So I want to give you a visual of what that would look like. I think I'm going to go with this black. It depends. And so I'm going to use that and I probably will offset that. And so that it just kind of works so well. I love that. 
love it. So easy. And all it is is a piece of printable ephemera from the old design shop. It is a wonderful, wonderful free resource. And so I definitely want to talk about that several times. And so then with the matting of the photos and then using some ephemera for even more matting, let's talk about something else we can do. And then we're going to play with some different photos. So another thing you can do then is that with these items, you know you can cut these down. This big triangle piece, you know you can cut this down and you can give this big triangle piece a mat. And then the other option you can do is that you could mat your background with a solid color. Isn't that pretty? So playing with these mats, you can even do an offset method, have a little bit showing here on the left, or you can just give it the same size mat the whole way around. And then of course you can play with these, dress these up, punches, uh, sanding, stitching. Oh man, so much to do with that, especially just a simple punch to a one by 12 piece of paper. Does it get any more simple than that? <laughs> No. And then along with that, since my paper has such of a vintage collage design, I can even incorporate that collage look in my mat. So I could add that turquoise as a mat and then I could get in more of that text. Of course, I think that's upside down. Come on, Bow Bunny. Let's get with it. Some branding strips are at the top. Some are at the bottom. And so when I get to playing with things like this, I do have to cut off my branding strip. Even if I don't use the paper, that branding strip gets in my way. And so along with your vintage papers, don't forget, you can also mat your photos. You can even mat with ephemera. And then when it comes to your background, you can even mat even more to get more of that vintage feel. And so I am definitely going to be layering this puppy up to no end because this is a special photo. I want to play. I'm definitely going to be playing with ephemera. I'm going to be cutting this up. And I think what I'm going to do is maybe make some banner pieces up there and get in some buttons and just vintage type of embellishments. And so with this here, I definitely think I'm going to break out this punch maybe some inking some stitching I don't know but it's going to be a, a lot of play so let's talk about this design and then let's talk about let's go back to the bare bones because all these things I'm showing as far as matting that is just extra I like to show options so I have some photo mats here so let's say now I'm just using that one photo and it's going to be a five by seven and then with that, anything that you were to trim down or cut off, you know, just to keep those extra scraps to the side because you could use those in layout number two or at the end, you could also use those for cards. So what's some other options to do with these strips? You know, you could also punch these strips and you could layer them underneath this diagonal design and you could offset them. So say with the burgundy, I could have it going more that way. The turquoise, I could have more flush down to the right the bottom right. Look how pretty that is. Oh, instant, instant. And then of course with this, you can even come down here, use that as a title journaling base. You could bring this up here, play with this, cut it up, not even use it. Okay. So let's talk about that for a minute. And so say if you have something like this and you have more than one five by seven photo, you could definitely do that. How pretty. Very bare bones, very basic, and then you dress it up with all those techniques and embellishments we've been talking about. And then you also could use this design, and you could come over here, because you do have this blank uh, cardstock at the top right. You could also get in three, four by six photos, because I know everybody loves that option. And then you could layer this one in the middle on top. Isn't that pretty? And you don't have to be so linear, you know, you can get a little cattywampus with that. Isn't that pretty? Again, three pieces of paper. And then with this, you could come over here and then you could play with this in whatever manner you wish. You could absolutely get a punch and you could, oh, let me just show that. You see how excited I get? Let's just show that. And so if you have three heirloom photos for one page, you are so lucky. You could get a tab punch and then you could put a tab here, a tab here, and a tab here, or you could even put that tab on the right. How fun is that using this piece of paper? So this three by six, you can incorporate it as layering or use it as embellishments, or what I may do is both of that option. So that's four by six. So let's play again with four by six. We could do this, uh, these one by twelves, you know, we could put them up here and we can make those into banners. 
And you know, you could always run some washi on that seam. We're always talking about that. And give that self some ink, you know, give that piece of paper some inking. So let's talk about uh, two four by six here. And then I have some four by fours. Oh man, you could get four photos. So you could do one of each. Let's do it this way. Oh man, that's so nice. So fun. Look at that. And so then with these here, again, all those treatments we've been talking about. And then you could layer these and you could even cut them and make one longer than the other. So that is four photos. That's fun. Now let's do, let's see what it would look like if we did one horizontal, one vertical. And again, where could we put these? Well, we could put them here. We could put them down here. We could put them in the middle. Let's see if we could do some framing. Let's see if we could do that. This would be a different option. I'm going to put the burgundy up here. This is something different. I love playing with paper. If I can get that under there. I love playing with paper. So there's that burgundy strip at the top. Oh, we could overlap that. I think that would be good. Let's overlap that big triangle. And then let's come over here and let's frame this. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes. I love that. Love that. Love that. Okay, so now we are basically creating a frame with a triangle and then two strips of 1 by 12. Isn't this fun? So then let's do a horizontal here. Let's do a vertical. And then let's play with some 3 by 3s. So you could absolutely get five photos in this design. Isn't that pretty? Playing with those pieces of paper, and again, you could do so many different things with this. You could even use this for layering. Come down here, layer that. So that is different options with this design. And so I had said that when we were making the kit in this 4 for 4 series, we have all these different measurements. You could just keep a running list of these measurements and you could keep cutting papers over and over and over again, playing with these designs. You'll never get tired of them because of this constant shifting of paper. That's all it is, a shifting of paper and just playing with the photos you want and the photo sizes. And then you just dress everything up. You start with the bare bones and work your way up. So I love that design too for framing. Love that, love that, love that. Okay, so I think I better stop there. Or I'll just keep on talking. So my plan is, is that I'm going to bring this burgundy down to bottom. And that's just how my brain kind of works. I will give some treatment to those. I may do some inking or sanding. I may put some washi in there. Or mm, could we do this? Hang on a minute. Could we do this? Could we layer some doilies in there? Was it, wouldn't that be interesting? Of course, I would cut these doilies in half because you don't need to use a whole doily for this. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yes. Smoke the sausage. Here we go. This is just lovely. This is what I mean about playing. Now we're starting to play with embellishments. Look at that. And then if you had one photo, layer it down here. And since this paper has such a busy design and we got so much going on, you could absolutely just leave that reserved for your title or journaling or both. And then don't put anything there because you don't need it. Look how pretty that is. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to get busy playing. I hope that gives you some options with paper number one. Oh, I'm sorry. Layout number one using all four of those papers. And what, what, does, um, what measurements do we have? A huge triangle. A 1 by 12, a 1 by 12, and a 3 by 6. Now that simply is easy. So hang on and come back and I will show you my finished layout and how I'm going to be playing with all of these elements. Okay, hold on. All right, I am back with my finished layout for layout number one in our 4 for 4 series. And I really enjoyed doing this layout because I did some treatments that I don't necessarily take the time to do, but I did them in small amounts so it didn't take me a lot of time to do them. So we'll definitely talk about that. So our papers number one through four, we got all four patterns on this layout. Where did it land? So my number one, which was our big triangle piece, landed right there as what I showed in the previous segment. Uh, number two, which which was a 1 by 12, it landed down here. And my number three, which was a 1 by 12, it landed down here. And then my number four, which was that 3 by 6, 
I think it was three by six. Yes, three by six. It landed here, 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 and there. So yes, I cut that puppy up. And that is always an option with your papers. Just because we cut them in that size doesn't mean they need to remain in that size. And so that's what I did. I took that three by six and I used it as a layering piece, like as a base for my photo, and then also too as an embellishment. And so we will talk about that in just a minute. So if you take away this photo, my base page really is a big triangle design. But if you look at my embellishments, I have a diagonal design. So that is two designs in one layout, simply by which the way you did your paper cut and then how you do your embellishment. So what that does is that leads your eye the whole way around because you got this big honking piece of paper and your eyes leading down this way. And then you have these em embellishments and I don't have a visual triangle, I just have a diagonal and so it goes this way. So I'm covering my all the bases. So that is a very fun way to do that. So now let's talk about the treatments that I did on this page because I really did play with this and I'm the only thing I think I need to add is I'd like to add the date my journaling is going to go right here and so I may put the date in with my journaling or I may take these uh, October afternoon mini market little out uh, numbers and I may tuck them down here it all depends if my mom can give me a year and we're not we're still working on that she doesn't know if, if she can give me a correct year for that and so what we're going to do is talk about the treatment so <laughs> I got stamping, stitching, and inking. Again, that's not something that I do on every page, let alone do all three on one page. So let's talk about the inking because I didn't ink all my papers. And so you can see right here that this is uh, inked, this memorabilia, ephemera, that is inked. And what else did I ink? I inked this uh, ivory card stock and I inked something else, I think. There was something. So I just did inking in a small amount because I don't like a lot of inking, but I enjoy a little bit of inking, if that makes sense. And if you notice, if I held this up, you see how this is not tucked, uh, this is not adhered down because I may take my journaling and tuck it underneath that. So as I'm working on my page, I'm thinking about my journal. I'm reflecting on what I might want to write and how much and where it's going to go. So I know it's going to be right here. So I will not adhere things completely. So I have that option of tucking if I wish to and so then the next treatment I did was stitching so of course you can see I did some stitching up here and I learned something that I probably wasn't paying attention to I did two rows of stitching here and then I did a little mini row of stitching here so it's not a lot of stitching just like I didn't do a lot of inking because then a lot of stitching takes a lot of time and but I did want that texture of the stitching and so when I did my banners up here I didn't keep them in a linear fashion I put one here moved this one up and moved this one down so my stitching, because I was going through three, uh, six layers at one time, I had to use a heavy duty needle. And so with a heavy duty needle means you're gonna get a bigger hole. And since I was getting really close to the edge, I had to be very careful that I did not tear my paper. So if you're using a thick thread or a floss, to do your stitching, and you, especially if you're doing through six layers of paper, make sure you pay attention to not do your stitching so close to the edge. So I lucked out and it turned it turned out really, really well, but I had to really be careful about, careful about that. So lesson learned on that. So I liked that little bit of stitching and then all I did, I'll show you on the back, all I did was adhere all that down with some washi, all those tails. That just helps the same place. And so the other thing I did was I broke out some stamp sets. So I broke out this Technique Tuesday uh, back in the day, 2011, by Allie Edwards. And so I used the word generations. Love that word right there. And then I broke out something that came from Michael's dollar bin. And I used grandma and grandpa because these are my great grandparents. And so I stitched generations here, here, and then here. So back through here, I didn't do any stamping because I knew my photo would cover it. And then I stamped grandma and grandpa. I went grandpa and grandma because that was in the order of the photo. So I just stamped that. And I would tell you for something that just cost a dollar from the dollar bin, these little stamps, what was that? Studio K, Studio G, something like that. They stamped really well. I was impressed. But of course, Allie Edwards, technically. Tuesday the best partnership ever when it came to stamps and so I did get some stamping in again it wasn't a lot it was just a little so it didn't take a lot of time but if you notice my stamping my stamping uh, here here and here and here 
that creates a visual triangle with the stamping. So that's fun how that works out. And so again, I did three different treatments, but I did them in small amounts, so it didn't take a huge amount of time. And sometimes you have to do that if you definitely want to get into that play mode. If you don't want to spend three or four uh, hours doing a layout, you do have to do things in small amounts. And so when you do inking, who says you have to ink everything? I didn't because I don't like a lot of that. And then when you do stitching, who says it just can't be a couple little lines of stitching? And then when you do stamping, who says it can't just be a couple words? So sometimes we get into that mindset we have to go bigger or go home. It doesn't have to be. And so I'm trying to learn that about my process. So then the other thing I wanted to show is that I did matting, as I had talked about in the previous segment, when you're only working the small piece of paper, or small amount of paper. And if you don't have certain embellishments, matte and matte and matte. So with my photo here, I did matte in black cardstock. And then I matted that in that big piece of ephemera and I'll have that, uh, it's called the old design shop. I will have that link below for free ephemera. I just cut that out, love that. And then also I matted my ivory cardstock onto some of that Simple Stories teal onto some Bow Bunny black text. So I not only did I mat my photo, I matted my overall design and then up here on the banners I matted those so these little banners which I think ended up being about one by two and a half something like that I matted them so there's two here there's two here and two here I just offset them a little bit and you'll see that in the close-ups so a lot of matting because I didn't want to put a ton of embellishments on this page but I wanted it to feel meaty and I wanted it to feel substantial so matting is one of those ways that you can make it feel that way however if you get into stitching six layers <laughs> yeah that's a little difficult so now let's talk about well let's just talk about the embellishments and then I'm going to talk about what if you don't know these people how can you do the journaling because that's what I'm going to be running into so up here at the top all I did was put that my mind's eye sticker as a cluster base do not overlook pieces of ephemera and stickers and even scraps of paper which is what this is here scrap of paper and ephemera and stickers as bases for embellishments and titles things like that and to have some wood veneer I have some uh, burgundy buttons and I just have them stitched on and so then I also use some bow bunny a brown gem so you see that I paired burgundy and brown and black and wood veneer all together and then down here I took a prima chipboard and a bread it has number two very vintage looking because there's two people in a photo and a wood veneer with a key can't go wrong with vintage and some more of these bow bunny brown gems and then I did break out my border punch and I gave it that uh that different it's like an art deco scallop and then also to my hexagon punch for that and then I added some more ephemera up here at the title of course my title is just the last name and I think sometimes when you're doing heritage layouts I think using the last name as your title is absolutely the most simplest thing you can do. And I also think it's the best thing you can do because that's what it is. It's about heritage. So why not use the last name? And then I broke out some more of these ephemera pieces. And all I simply did was just cut some of these little ones up and I just tucked them. And then I used some gems and a Tim Holtz paper clip. And this is just, that's all that is. It's just layered with a couple pieces of bling. Very, very fun to do. Now I'm looking at my notes here. I did want to show my template that I used for my stitching. Some of you are going to be like, what? This is back in the day. Little Davis Designs. Does anybody else still have this stitching template? And so all I did was take my, what I used to poke my holes for my breads, and I would just put this on top of where I wanted it, and I would just poke my holes with a little uh, foam pad underneath. That's how I did my holes for my stitching. Just easy to do, takes a little bit of time. And then the inking that I used was called Prima Black Coal. And again, not a lot of uh, that, but it was fun to do. Okay, so let me look up my notes. And I think the last thing I'm gonna talk about, I think so, I have two notes. <laughs> let me just look. Is that what do you do if you don't know these people? Because sometimes that's what happens. We have these photos and then uh, fortunately for me, and I lost my notes, oh my great gravy. I guess I'm just going to have to go by one my one note is that uh, fortunately I still have my mom that she can help me because uh, these are her her grandparents so these are my great grandparents is that if you don't know the people what you can do is when you journal especially if you don't know the year what you can do is when you journal ask the people that are in these 
photos, the questions you would ask them if they were still with you. So in this case, if I didn't have my mom to rely on, I would write about my great grandparents and I would journal as to what I'm thinking. Uh, what were they like? What was their occupations? What kind of car did they drive? Did they like each other? <laughs> were they nice to each other? Uh, did they, you know, I don't even know how many children they had. I just, I, I just don't know hardly any details. And what were their dreams? What were their hopes? And so as you're thinking these things, that simply can be your journaling. You can write out those questions in those question forms and use that as your journaling if you don't know these people because you're still getting your thoughts. You're still recording the story. You're just taking their photo and recording your story along with it that you never got to meet them. So when it comes to heritage photos and heritage layouts, if you can intertwine one more than one generation into a layout, out, that is absolutely awesome. And so I will probably do a little bit of both. I'm going to have some details given to me by my mom, but I'm also going to put on there, what were these great grandparents like? Would they have liked to meet? Did they like their job? What was their hobbies? What was their strengths? What was their weaknesses? What were they good at? And, you know, just things about life, you know, and what would they think about life today? That's what I would. So I'm going to incorporate a little bit about that. I'm going to incorporate my uh, feelings about not knowing them. And I would like to have known them. And then also the, a few details that my mom can give me. So I am very, very happy to have this done. I'm happy to use this Simple Stories Legacy line that I've been putting back on the back burner for these special photos. And this is the special photo. So I'm glad to have something done off of my bucket list. So I want to encourage you, even if you do not know the people, you can still journal. Just record the story of what you would like to know about your ancestors. I think that's an interesting take on it. So if you have any questions about this layout number one or the kit or cutting the papers, please list below. And then we will come back in a couple days and we'll be playing with layout number two. So hang on for some close-ups and come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.